Hi, I'm Jonathan Harvey. I'm heading Portfolio Management for Nokia Core Networks. Uh, we're here in Budapest with Reza Ranama, who's the Director of Mobile Core for BT. Reza, welcome to our Nokia Core talk. No, thank you. Um, so BT's got a reputation of being sort of first in the UK for new technologies, advanced services, this type of thing. Yeah. Um, and obviously we're working together on 5G standalone core and, yeah. and rolling that out. So this is more of a discussion, you know, about, sure. about that area basically. Sure, sure. So um, I suppose the obvious question is why 5G standalone core? Yeah, um, I mean 5G has promised a lot of stuff for industry. Right, um, the the high bandwidth, the the precision, um, the advanced technologies that we can run on top of the five G network is absolutely the promise of what five G gives us. The core network is at heart of this, right? I look at the five G core as an evolution more than a revolution. Yeah. Right. We are in the process of obviously you know deploying our NSA network, non standalone network that has five G and four G in a single core network. But eventually, you know, we will in, and we are in the process of introducing the five G core. What that gives us, I suppose, is an end to end capability to run high speed communication, and that on its own requires. Uh, this new core that works with, you know, with our radio network. Yeah. Um, and I guess without that, we won't have the promise of 5G. You know, so that is very, very integral to the to what we want to achieve in enterprise, in consumer, uh, for the BT services. Okay, understood. And how do you see? I mean, there's lots of talk. You know, we're all focused on rolling 5G SA out yeah, right now, yeah. but there's lots of talk around slicing, yeah. voice over new radio, you know, yeah. what's coming next. I mean, how do you see that fitting into sort of the plan? Yeah, I mean, for me, like, um, voice over uh, new radio, um, the IMS doesn't change yeah. with this, yeah. right? So you think about what does it give our customer base? You know, and we had the same issue when the uh, circuit switch fallback came for Volte. You know, why Volte? You know, yeah. circuit switch fallback works, and it still works in a lot of places across the world. Uh, with voice over an hour, you know, obviously it has benefits to our radio network. You know, that benefit is great, yeah. and again, it's sort of build voice over new radio, and better stuff will come. Yeah. So. Um, I personally quite passionate about AR and VR. I think they will really come eventually. I mean, if you see the what Meta are doing with their VR capability yeah. and all that, all all my kids, you know, love play on on that type of stuff. Voice of a uh, new rate, voice of a radio, one hour, and potentially. Um, a packet prioritization for video, yeah. you know, it will really change that type of stuff, mm -hmm. you know. So, and for augmented reality, it's the same, you know, uh, it's the same. So, it's the building blocks to where we need to get to yeah. for Vuna. For, for network slicing, again, I mean, you, you hear a lot about uh, private network. You know, so there's a lot of stuff happening around private network, uh, whether it's for IoT or uh, many other stuff. I think the network slicing eventually will again evolve that type of use case yeah. you know but again this is evolving you know technology evolves and and i think in 5g we have to sort of trust the process a little bit yeah. build build and continuously innovate so start with basic 5g SA yes. and then sort of innovate yes, on top innovate of it. on top and of it, yes. i mean it was a good point around the voice side of things because mm. of course you know we're seeing now in the standards this sort of immersive voice yeah. ims data channel and stuff yeah. which gives you more capability for AR, VR and everything. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So Jonathan, as you know, um, the 5G network for us is going to be critical. Yeah. We use, uh, and, and I guess the, the SDM, you know, the subscriber data management sits at the heart of our network. Yeah. And in all long, and, and the SDM for us, is super critical, not only because it does 5G and 4G in mobile, but our you know fixed network also utilizes IMS that utilizes the SDM network. Yeah. So for us, is absolutely critical. Well, um, can you just tell me a bit about the evolution of this product and yeah. where it's going? Okay, understood. So I mean, yeah, I mean for us, 
the SDM is sort of the core of the core, you know, it's, right. it's, it's absolutely essential to the right. core. It's, um, um, and we sort of coined this phrase unbreakable core for quite some time that, you know, it's this cannot go down. It's got to be so no. robust. And all of the focus is around robustness. But we've seen, you know, we've had this one NDS product for a long time. Right. Um, but we see this evolution now to cloud, we see the evolution to 5G, yeah. and we're moving to a new platform, so we're moving to this shared data layer. Right. And, you know, everyone's a little concerned by that. Yeah. You know, yeah. we've got to migrate our existing install base, which is huge, yeah. onto shared data layer. So we've got a, a bunch of tools in place. Mm. Um, we've got this SDL assistant tool, which allows us to do this migration in a very automated way. And, you know, the first live migrations in commercial networks are happening today. Mm. So uh, it sort of de-risks your network, for example, that mm. you know, you're seeing this happening in the field already. Mm. But yeah, I mean, from our perspective, the evolution of SDL then mm. is, is that it's not just for 5G. You know, okay, it's yeah. cloud-based, it's not just for 5G, it's for all of your access domains. Yeah. It's sort of access domain agnostic. Yeah. All of your su subscriber profiles will sit on that same platform, mm. basically. And what's critical for a service provider like us is the availability of this. Yeah. You know, and I like the way you talk about unbreakable um, network. Yeah. You know, um, and that is going to be absolutely critical when you run almost critical national infrastructure on such network. Yeah. So absolutely. That's, that's pretty good to hear. So we we talked about. Unbreakable core. We talked yeah. about uh, high availability and everything. So you've obviously chosen to build a fully geo redundant core, yeah. um, and I suppose you've answered the question a bit already. Mm. You know, in in terms of the the how mission critical the network is, how you're providing all the sort of uh, essential services and everything. Can you mm. expand on that? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, lot rides on this network, right? Um, and as I said, specifically if you look at SDM specifically, right? It does both mobile and fixed for us. Yeah. So one of the things that we're looking at, obviously distributed network for us in uh, in UK is important because of where we collect traffic, you know, we want the traffic to be as close to the user yeah. for the latency, all of that. That's one element of it. But the second element is, as any service provider will tell you, the nightmare of if you have one or two sites failure yeah. and the signaling storms that comes with it, and we all have the scars to prove that, right? What we're trying to build is the network that almost self-heals itself. Now, that this has been thrown around in industry yes. for a long time, yeah. right? There are algorithms and people a lot cleverer than me that build these, uh, build these algorithms. But for me, having a redundant network that can deal with most eventualities that you can think about yeah. is critical, right? If people, uh, so you know, in the UK we're the PSAP, you know, we deal with 999 and 80 odd percent of the uh, 999 traffic comes from the mobile network, right? If this network doesn't work, it has a serious yeah, that's impact. Crazy, yeah. You see what I mean? So, having an available network on the almost all conditions is critical. But we can only, you know, for us, we have to think about all scenarios of what can go wrong and keep building for that. Yeah. And, you know, uh, it's a difficult thing to say that you'll have, a, for example, a 7-9 series or something that will never go down because mm. I don't think anybody wants to st stick their hand up and say, I have that mm. SLA. Yeah. But you continuously think about uh, how to achieve that level of uh, SLA. And I think for me, a distributed network that can handle multiple failures and, and you can basically monitor the network based on certain CPU level and run quite cool across yeah. them all yeah. is absolutely critical. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of our work together is you know, focused around that area because for yes. us, having the SDM solution as robust as possible is absolutely key. Oh, absolutely. And your requirements sort of, well, I mean, I hate to say, but sort of drag us kicking and screaming there. You know, Good. we've <laughs> we've we've got to get it done basically. Yeah. yeah. So it's a. It's the means to the end. And yeah. just to c c conclude on that, I mean, the, the, again, going back to the SDM side of it, right? Every call, whether it's data or voice, relies on this box yeah. to reply back 
tell the user where to go in the network and the service that it needs to receive. Yeah, exactly. And and you know, in a network the size that we have is as chatty as anything as you can imagine. So that SDM distributed layer working with a very distributed core across UK is the challenge that we're both mm. trying to yeah, exactly. achieve. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Let's um, talk a bit wider, so mm. out, and even outside of the UK as well. Mm. Let's look at the wider sort of industry and market. Mm. I mean, how do you see? You know, what's your opinion on how the telcos are evolving with all the changes which are happening? Yeah, I look at this in two ways. I mean, telecom is now um, connectivity, and we be in BT. We pride ourselves to connect for good, right? And and that comes with a massive responsibility, and I'm sure telecom industry as a whole now have a massive responsibility on connecting everyone, yeah. you know. Um, there was a time that, you know, the, let's say internet was mainly for information. Now internet through telecom, it controls the physical yeah. environment, right? And with that comes huge responsibilities and it's very, very different to, to just having a voice conversation, you know. I mean, voice, video, data, controlling stuff, things is all coming into it. Yeah. So industry is changing so rapidly and it's absolutely integral part of the new industry, which I call industry 4.0. You know, industry 4.0 yeah. will not happen without telecom, you know, telecom industry. Yeah. Um, so that's one element of it. The second element that I look at that is the complexity that is bringing with it. Right, there was a time that I was, you know, I was an 18-year-old switch engineer. You yeah. know, I went for 20 day of training, and I came back and I could do stuff. Now, yeah. now you got to not only understand your domain in telecom, you also had to understand the containerized network. You got to understand how software engineering works. So the domain of telecom it's is just more, more and more complex, more yeah. and more complex, and is moving more into tech. Yeah. You know, um, you know, purchase of appliances is dropping. You know, no, mm. you know, everything is software based, and that software needs to be stable. You know, um, and so the complexity that is bringing with it is quite immense. But the users want to use a very simple service. Yeah, yeah. So tel telecom operators and telecom service providers have to basically build a quite a complex service. But provide a very simple, uh, yeah. simple so product. Abstract all the complexity yeah, exactly. away from them. Yeah, yeah. So it's, that's 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 the that's the challenge. Um, so let me turn this around to you yep. as a supplier. You know, what do you think? I mean, what your challenges are in this new complex world? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I could almost play back a lot of what you said. I mean, the complexity is the challenge. Mm. You know, if, if, if I look at the same sort of scenario, you know, when I started doing this, you know, we were deploying on custom hardware, mm. everything was pretty basic, you had one platform. Now we're in a scenario where we've moved to a virtualized environment with yeah. lots of different platforms. Uh, we're, we've now moved to a containerized environment with more platforms again, and we're seeing yeah. the the proliferation of platforms is crazy right now. And now, of course, we see the hyperscalers coming into our space and offering platforms as well. Right. So the complexity is is sort of getting out of control. Mm. And, and the issue is how do we abstract ourselves from the complexity? How do we sort of automate it? Mm. So for us, I think, Automation is absolutely key. Right. You know, how right. do we make this simple to manage? How mm. do we, as we said earlier, how do we make it more self-healing? Right. Um, and you know, where the, where the system will effectively look after itself. We don't have to have people constantly sort of manually changing things. Right. Uh, and the other issue, of course, is because of the complexity, any manual change, you you know, the knock-on impact can, can be massive as well. Mm. So there's that. Um, I think we've also, it's interesting when we talk about the, the enterprise space, the industry 4.0 space as well, and, and you know, the enterprise is wanting sort of 5G type services, low latency, yeah. advanced services, AR, VR, this type of stuff. Yeah. And, um, and we see very much a demand from the enterprise to mm. have 
core networks. Right. And so there we're looking at, you know, how do we move to a different business model? How do we move to an as a service business model? Mm -hmm. You know, can we reduce the complexity, automate everything and, and offer the core just as a service? Mm -hmm. You know, so you do the bare minimum and what you've got access to is mm -hmm. a very advanced core, but you don't need to see the complexity underneath. So I think, I mean, we're moving there fast. Mm -hmm. That's a key initiative for us. Right. But, you know, and at the same time as we're rolling out 5G, mm -hmm. we're now looking at 5G advanced, you know, what's, right. what's coming in two years' in time. Years, and, yeah. and so this is a constantly moving target. Yeah, so one thing you said is quite important to me, that operational stuff. Okay? For us, as an operator, you know, operating a complex network is challenging. Yeah. So more you guys introduce um, automation, um, self-healing stuff, which you, you know you can achieve through a number of ways. Yeah. You know, it could be a simple while do statement or a proper ML AI yeah. stuff is what makes our lives easier and give our customers a better service. Yeah, and I think it's 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 on both our sides, you know, yeah. because we need to reduce the complexity, of, you know, for you guys operating the network for your end users, yeah. for us deploying it and maintaining it, because you know, as the new services are coming faster and faster, there's this assumption that we will be dropping software much faster yeah. as well, and and that requires a, a huge amount of automation, automation. To, to to simplify it. Agreed. Yeah. Okay, Reza, so you've selected Nokia for subscriber data management. Um, the obvious question I have to ask is, why Nokia? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, we have been working with Nokia for years in this domain. You know, our HSS in our 4G network is Nokia, uh, and we have got good experience. This is so critical to our network. You know, we really want to choose the best in this domain. Okay. And uh, so evolving that 4G experience that we have with yourself uh, and bring it into the 5G is absolutely paramount. Uh, and we've also, in part, as part of our all IP program, we're moving our fixed line into the same IMS network okay. and we utilize you know, the SDM technology for that as well. So for me, uh, from the, uh, what you provide as a product is very important uh, in terms of features and services, yep. but also operationally. You know, for me, it's always 50-50, you know. Yeah. Can we run a good product on this? Can we, you know, build a good service on it? But can we support it and yeah. operate it? Yeah. And uh, so that experience with yourselves helped a great deal. Your roadmap and the stuff that we're doing together operationally to keep this uh, network running is why we chose um, the SDM okay. for 5G. Understood, thanks. Yeah. So Jonathan, you know how important the SDM is to the network, yep. you know, and as, I, and as I said, it's 4G, 5G, fixed line, everything. What are you guys going to do to ensure operationally, you know, when you talk about how critical this is to the infrastructure, what are you going to do to help an operator like BT operationally support such a critical platform? Yeah, that's a really good question because it's, it's not just the software. You know, right. and, and, you know, we've got a lot of experience in building the software and it's very robust and we spend a lot of time making sure it's robust, you know, right. we test it to death, basically. Uh, but it's also, you know, once it's in the field mm. and it's running in your network, how do we make sure it's robust? How do we make sure that, you know, it's delivering mm. what you need? And that's absolutely key. So, you know, it's the, it's the services wrapper around it as well. It's making sure we have the right experts in the right places, right. you know, that, that we, we have a sort of a very clear understanding of the architecture and the robustness mechanisms and and as we said you know it's it's moving down that automation route as well but yeah. route, moving down the automation route safely mm. you know you could automate everything you know no manual touch and yeah. uh, you know you've got to be careful how you do it especially for something like SDM so I think it's uh, it's it's a lot of things all wrapped up. You know, the software is only one element of it. It's True. it's the whole services wrapper. It's how we work together. You know, it's um, and be, especially because of its place in the network. It's it's that degree of trust we've got to have working with Absolutely. each other as well. Yeah, understanding the traffic profile. Yeah. a huge amount of work goes into totally understanding how the traffic profile works. Yeah, exactly. How we can protect the network from any issues. So, yeah. yeah, it's good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
Arezza, thanks very much for the discussion. It's been, it's been really yeah, interesting. It's to be here. And no doubt we've got a lot more to talk about. Yeah. Um, so to everyone, thanks very much for joining us. Um, it was a really interesting discussion with BT and we'll wrap it here. Thanks. Mm -hmm.